Welcome to another episode of the Urban Wall Street Project. Today's is a little short, a nice little tidbit, if you will. Of course, you know the theme for the Urban Wall Street Project is maximizing the urban dollar. And we want to stress and emphasize financial literacy, understanding your business, planning your financial future very strategically. Well, in order to do that, you have to make sure you're implementing the right practices. So we're going to talk about a few things. So today's topic is good debt versus bad debt. Do you know the difference? Is there a difference? When it comes to debt, truly, it is the one thing that uh, commonly bonds us all. Everyone suffers from debt. We all have debt. And for the most part, people think debt is a negative thing. But is it possible to have good debt? Is there such a thing as good debt? You may be asking yourself, good debt? I, I really don't think so. But here's the reality. There is a situation where you can have good debt. Of course, we know the bad debts. But here's a situation of good debt. Good debt is debt with someone else is paying. Bad debt, of course, is that which you must pay through your blood, sweat, tears, and maybe a couple of your children. <laughs> but who knows what it is? But you understand the scenario. So you say, good debt, someone else is paying. How could somebody else pay my debt? Well, here's a scenario. A good debt example would be having a rental property. As with most cases, a bank will loan you money. Okay? They'll loan you the money to purchase the property. You then pass the burden of the loan on to the renter or the individual in the form of rent. Thus, you receive credit for paying your loan on time, decreasing your, increasing your credit worthiness, though the revenue is not directly coming out of your pocket. That's just one example, but very clear. So just think about that. Someone loans you money for your particular dream, your vision, your investment. You use that money to purchase a property, and then you pass the cost or the, the mortgage, if you will, onto the renter, and then now they pay their rent, which entail pays your mortgage, thus making it look like you're paying your bill on time, which you are, but it's not actually your money. So that's a good situation for anybody that's thinking of getting into real estate. There's one aspect of how you can really maximize your money and really increase your financial literacy and increase your credit worthiness. But um, I also want to talk about this other thing, minding your business, because they go hand in hand. In order to increase your debt, increase your debt or decrease your debt, I should say, and increase your credit worthiness, it's very important that you mind your business. Now, somebody like, mind your business, generally when you hear that, we might think it's rude to say mind your business. But understand something. Your mind is your business, okay? Your mind is your business. And since your mind is your business and all businesses need minding to be successful, it's only wise that you would do it. So look at it from a different perspective, okay? Um, you are the CEO of your life. And understanding that you are the CEO of life, you are either a liability to your life or you're an asset to your life. Well, the best way to be an asset is to understand good debt and to understand bad debt and also to understand, understand how you can increase your credit and how you can hurt your credit. And we're going to talk about a few uh, ways to improve your credit and definitely a few ways that will surely kill your credit. So before I get into it, I just want to say, remember, you are your greatest asset, but you can also become your greatest liability. And if you don't know what a liability is, that means you spend, spend your life spending, spending, spending on things that don't generate revenue or going to increase and appreciate over the course of time. You don't want to be that individual. Make your business be one of, I'm on point with mine, I'm minimizing my spending, I'm maximizing my investments, I'm maximizing my assets, and I'm truly minimizing my liabilities. And you can do this even if you're starting out on a shoestring budget or a six, seven figure budget. If you had a seven figure budget, trust me, individual with seven figure budget still have the same problem. You see that foreclosure rate is definitely hitting the million dollar homes. So don't just think it's just people that's underemployed or, or in poverty situations or poor that are struggling um, with debt. Everybody's struggling with debt. So with that, I want to get into a couple of ways that uh, we can help our debt and hurt our debt. First, we're going to get the bad news out the way. And the bad news is five surefire credit score killers. The first one I'm going to give you is several, but I'm going to give you a few that I checked off. A charge off. Some of us may have seen it on your credit report. You may not. If you don't have a credit report, definitely reach out. You can get one free credit report every year if you didn't know that. And there's three different credit bureaus, TransUnions, Equifax, and, um, and the third one, you find it out. I know it, but I want to see how much you're going to do your homework. Okay, TransUnion's one, Equifax is another one. What's the third one? Do your homework and find out. But here's something you can think about, a charge-off. So what is the charge-off? Well, a charge-off occurs when the lender believes the debt won't be paid. 
and that's one of the worst things you can do to your credit score. And you think, oh, it's a charge if I don't have to pay it, they don't want their money. Well, what that shows is that, well, this person didn't give us our money, so they're probably not gonna give you yours. You definitely don't wanna have a charge off on your account because it's not a positive thing. So if you can, at all expense, eradicate them or don't even find yourself in that situation. Second one is collections. <clears throat> Many of us have uh, found ourselves letting our home phones ring and not picking it up. Why? Because we know it's probably somebody trying to find some money. Do not avoid debt collectors because what's happening is collections are going to keep calling. And what is a collection agency, in case you don't know? Why are these people calling me? How are they get inform my information? I'm sure some people are asked. Well, what a collection is, of course, is a third party. And this is a company. The person that you owe, the creditor, uses a third party to collect debts or to try to collect debts that you owe, meaning they've gotten tired of trying to co contact you, reaching you, calling you, getting the runaround. So when you find yourself in this um, collection status, it's really not a good situation because someone else is going to try to collect that money and they've been hired by the creditor or the lender. So be mindful of that. That's collections. You don't really want to go into collections. If you can avoid it, definitely avoid it. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can do it, but once again, it's about you doing some research online, tap some buttons and start finding out how to put yourself in a better position. Third one, paying late. Understand this, 35% of your credit score is payment history. 35%, that's over more than a third. So creditors and lenders and potential prospects, whether it's mortgage lenders or home, home lenders, are looking at your payment history. Does this person pay on time? And if you pay on time, then you're good. But if your payment history is kind of shaky, then that will definitely affect your uh, prospects of receiving a loan and it surely will decrease your credit score. So be mindful of that as well. So you want to stay away from charge-offs, collection so far and paying late. A fourth one is foreclosure. Now sadly, uh, the country is experiencing, uh, or people in the country I should say, are experiencing the foreclosure of their homes um, and it's seemingly being record numbers and rates and it's not just um, low income or, um, or middle income. It's starting to you know, crawl up into the Hamptons of New York and some of these multi-million dollar homes. People are just um, feeling the crunch. So foreclosure is one of the worst things that can happen to you, of course, because it definitely hurts your credit score and it's going to make it much harder in the future for you to get a, a loan on a home or a mortgage loan because if you know right now, home, homeowners or home lenders want about a 678 or a 690 credit score to be approved for a, a home loan. And just last summer, the average credit score across the nation was about 678. So if the average is 678 and we're looking for six, they're looking for 690, then um, a lot of people on average won't be able to... Uh, uh, how should I say, be satisfactory for a loan, won't be approved for a loan. So understand that. If you find yourself in a position of, of foreclosure, um, it, it can definitely affect your credit. So that means don't go out and buy a home unless you're pretty confident that you're going to be able to maintain that overhead because that's a serious, serious overhead. And looking back from that is rough. Fifth, sometimes a uh, closing credit card that still has a balance. That's, a, that's a definitely a dagger, closing a credit card that still has a balance. Because you think, well, you know what, I have this balance, I'm just going to close it, whatever the case may be. Well, this is what happens. When you do this, uh, your, your credit limit drops to a zero. So now you, you close off this account, but your credit limit drops to a zero, though your balance remains the same, causing it to appear as if you've maxed your card. Thus, your score um, drops. So it's very important to understand that. You know? So I want you to be mindful of these things. Five credit, card killer, five credit score killers. Charge-offs, collections, paying late, foreclosure, and closing costs. Now, here's five credit score improvements. Now, these are definitely ones you can put in place. But understand something. If it took you seven years over the course of six or seven, eight years, your credit went crazy, it's going to take some time to bring it back. So don't feel like you're just going to be able to fix your credit overnight because it's a process that you must go through. But if you go through the process diligently and focused and be on point and be patient, you will reach the destination of a better credit situation. So here's one you could do. Stop using your credit cards. That's the first and foremost. If you have credit debt based on credit cards, stop using the credit cards. You stop using the credit cards, you can start recognizing what I need to do to try to get control of what I'm doing. Do not accumulate more debt. It's really hard to minimize your debt when you're still accruing more debt. Get a copy of your credit report and clean it up. As I mentioned report, everyone has an opportunity to get one. You got three different credit bureaus, get with them, 
and get it. A free one, every year you can get a free one. You can go online, it's not a problem because your credit score is very serious and you need to know it. Because if you know you have things that you need to repair, how can you repair your credit if you don't know what needs to be fixed? A lot of people don't wanna look at their credit score for their fear, they don't wanna see what they owe, they don't wanna see how detrimental it is. But the only way to correct it is to see it. So don't be afraid of what you've created. Look and see where your situation is, if it's a monster or if it's a, it's a small molehill, and then start taking the necessary steps to get in place. Get you a credit report and look it over, okay? It's very important. And clean it up. And now the way to clean it up, a lot of times you see credit repair. Now be very mindful, you see credit repair, we can repair your, repair your credit, charge us, bankruptcies, and all of those things. And a lot of times there are ways to legally remove items that are not accurate from your credit report. But do know this, if there is a charge or a debt on your credit report that is real, it is accurate, you did make it, it's valid, that is going to be there. You're not gonna be able to throw away a valid debt. Now there's some people that promise that they can do it, but I really don't think that that's possible, so be mindful of that. Third, do not apply for any new credit cards. Do not apply, you're trying to clean up your credit, you're trying to get your finances on point, do not apply for new credit. Um, as long as you are in repair mode, no new apps. More than likely you'll get turned down anyway. And what also happens when you apply, every time you apply for credit, that's an inquiry. And inquiries also affect your credit score. So if you're in a credit repair mode and you apply for three or four credit cards and you get denied, all those inquiries are gonna show up and those inquiries will lower your credit score. So be mindful of that. If you're in the credit repair, do not apply for any new credit cards, not even a small one, not a Gap card, a Blockbuster card. Don't apply for anything. Just take your time, get everything in order, and be patient, and things will get better. Fourth, keep accounts with balances open. Now, though you may be tempted to shut them down, you don't, you don't want to do that. You don't want to shut it down because um, you, know, you have a high balance or whatever the case may be, because if you do that, um, you want to make sure it won't negatively affect your credit scores. So if you have a balance, you're paying on it, but don't, don't cut it. People say, oh, I'm just going to cut up my credit card. I'm dead in that account. Be mindful of that. Make sure that that action won't adversely affect what you're trying to do. Okay, be very careful of that. And then a fifth, and the last most importantly, people. Call your creditor. A lot of us don't want to speak to the credit collection agencies or the lender or the, because we don't know what to say or we feel like they're just going to start blasting us. The reality is, they really just want to work with you. They're not really here to help you. They want to work with you to help you get yourself on point. And you'll be surprised on how much you can accomplish with just a telephone call. One telephone call can change your life and they can set you up. Because the bottom line is most of us know that it's very hard to pay off our full debts and lenders and creditors know that too. But the worst thing you can do is to cease all communication because communication is critical for any progression. So if you want to be progressive in your credit repair, speak to the people who you have the outstanding balances with. A lot of times you can do deals and you may not have to pay the full balance and maybe a half or a third or whatever the case may be. But there's always different options out there, okay? So be very mindful to exercise them. Of course, as usual, you've been watching Earl Christian III, the Urban Wall Street Project. This is a nice little financial literacy short. I hope you appreciated some of the things I've said. I hope you recognize where your flaws may be or what you may need to correct your credit situation or your debt situation. I hope you understand what good debt is. So if you plan on being uh, investing in real estate, understand that that will put you in a, a position of acquiring good debt. For my people with bad debt, recognize those five ways to improve your credit score and recognize those five ways that will hurt your credit score. Be mindful, be prosperous, be patient, but be aware. Until next time, peace. In 76, I don't Boy, I emphatically mean that. Wow. Rap. This shit's not what it happens to seem black. Everybody swear they the next pop for big. Until it's time to get shot, you dig? I'm a straight to the top. Nowadays, you got rats laying the cops. Selling a story for fame and props like pimps for dough. And you telling me rap's not a menstrual show? I don't even know I should. But it seems like it won't do no good. But your boy still got a rep for the hood. Brothers trying to get out any way they could. Word. You already know. I caught 
y'all slacking this shit. Get used to the fact I'm here. I'm trying to be caked up and comfortable in it. And oh.